Good afternoon and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker. It's a 30-minute daily update on the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria and across the world. First, some of the highlights. Today, six new cases of COVID-19 reported in Oshun State as Nigeria Center for Disease Control records 190 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the country. And traders appear to be flouting state government's directive on social distancing rules in New Lagos Road, Benin City. It's more COVID-19 cases in Nigeria as the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC puts the total number of confirmed cases in the country now at 190 with 20 persons discharged and two deaths recorded. Six new cases of the virus was reported in Oshun State, making it the third highest after the Federal Capital Territory. Now, looking at uh, the N Center for Disease Control, continue to call for the cooperation and collaboration of Nigerians as it deploys healthcare teams for contact tracing. Now, a look at the state-by-state -state breakdown of the cases showing. Lagos now has 98 cases. The FCT Abuja, 38 following uh, Oshun with 20 cases. Oyo has eight cases, Akwaibom uh, five, four each in Edo, Ogun and Kaduna states. Boti has three cases, while Ekiti and Enugu have two cases with Rivers, Benue states recording one case each. Now, up to two fatalities as a result of COVID-19 in Nigeria, it appears that some people are still not paying attention to the call for social distancing. Now, this large crowd you see is on the new Lagos Road, close to the new Benin Market in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. The traders in this video you see are buying and selling at very close range, despite the call from the state government warning residents of the state not to flout the government's regulations regarding containing the COVID-19 pandemic, which also includes the ban of more than uh, 12 persons, not more than 12 persons, the need for social distancing for at least one meter and that all businesses remain closed. Our correspondent Jessica Lurugwishere tried to find out from the traders why they appear adamant in observing the guidelines on COVID-19. Waiting government say they call share for us. They they, they don't call the waiting they tell the the waiting they, they call the name. Eh? Sapnelizer. They don't call share for us again. That, that, that's what they, they do. Um, oh, they do pop 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 full bag. They don't call share for us again. Now say they call the seller for the market. May for sure everybody come over this market because you don't know who is who, who get the virus. If you can close the church, you should close the market as well because you say anywhere people are gathering. The market is a place where people gather. So make provisions for us to sustain, not for you to start saying we should stay indoors. Staying indoors will not give us food, and our children will start crying. We've been joined by the Deputy Governor of Edo State, Mr. Philip Shaibu, joins us via Skype. Thank you so much for joining us at this time. Um, I see that you are looking quite compliant, if I may. But tell us what's happening in Benin City, especially New Road. It appeared there's nothing like social distancing there. Yeah, uh, we are actually have this situation in our hands, and you know uh, the issue of coronavirus. We have to be civil, and we have to go from the angle of being uh, public awareness and appealing to our people. Uh, this is we, we, we're trying to be careful not to use force because we discovered that force will not be the order of the day at this time, but to appeal. Uh, we had a meeting this morning with Mr. Governor and the tax force, and uh, we have uh, asked the, uh, the security agency to enforce the partial lockdown in the state. Uh, only uh, essential commodities uh, stores should be open, and that we agreed this morning that the law enforcement agency should uh, enforce. 
tell us uh, about the allegations coming um, that the sanitizers, uh, rather officials from government, are profiting from it, uh, that they were supposed to be free, but uh, they're making money. They're asking people to pay for it. The sanitizers going around uh, the state, gov the, the, the local governments, and some of the markets as well. That is not true. Uh, we are distributing our sanitizer through the local government and to various palaces. And we have insisted that these uh, sanitizers are free. Uh, we have no record of any of them that have been uh, that have been reported to us to be selling. And I, if we do know, obviously we'll be arrested. Uh, so th those are just social media uh, discussion. Uh, we have no record of anybody or information of any of our staff uh, because this uh, COVID-19 tax force is not just a government thing. It's a collaboration with the religious bodies, with traditional rulers and stakeholders. So we have everybody are represented in this uh, tax force. So I think those are just social media, social media discussion. Finally, tell us about the, the four cases we understand that Edo State has, uh, how they are doing, and also your efforts, and that's the state government, in ensuring that um, strict compliance is adhered to some of the guidelines uh, you've, you've put out there. Yeah, the, uh, social distances uh, to some feel they're just keeping two meters uh, uh, from each other. No, social distance that we are enforcing Edo State has to do with you staying at home unless it becomes very important that I should leave home because we want to cut the chain of this spread. And the easiest way to cut this chain is for our people to remain at home. And only essential services are allowed to open. We don't want to do a total lockdown because when you look at this, the economic aspect of total lockdown, vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, trying to cut the spread, we have to make, make do, uh, we have to arrive at a balance, and that's what we are trying to achieve in Edo. But uh, uh, we, we, it's a problem for us, and we are already looking at how to really enforce it. And that is why we told the security agency and our poll to go out this morning. The police went through training yesterday on how to be civil, because we don't want uh, our people to be molested. Their human rights and dignity must be observed. So. Uh, and also we are going on public awareness so, and also using the stakeholders, using the religious body, using the traditional rulers to appeal to our, our conscience for us to actually observe. Coronavirus is not for the rich, it's not for the poor, it's for everybody. Uh, so we are passing on this information through our public awareness campaign from the media up to town criers at the, at, at the world level and village level. To, to sensitize our people because we have to go through persuasion. And for the facilities, we are we are on top of our facility. Uh, uh, the cell of passenger is completely dedicated. And the, the main hospital that is house having about 158 bed is undergoing uplifting as we speak. All the patients that were admitted there uh, they moved to uh, a dual specialist hospital for us to uh, uh, clean up that facility to join with the existing isolation center. There are there are other existing isolation center in Stella of Basenjo, but the entire hospital now is being combated to for COVID-19 isolation centers and holding centers. Right. And for yes. Well, we'd like to thank you. Wish we had more time, but thank you. Wish you all the best as you um, go about trying to stem the tide of COVID-19. Thank you. The Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Chaibu, for joining us on the program. Thank you, Millicent. Thank you very much for having me. All right, we're going to touch base in Kano State, but just before that, uh, joining us in the studio is a, a doctor uh, that's a public health physician. We'd like to thank you for joining us at this time, Dr. Riike Oguyemi. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, now looking at everything, uh, that situation in Benin City, does that give you cause to worry? Yes, because um, even though we're doing well in Lagos, it's still a global issue. So whatever affects Benin City, definitely, at the end of the day, will cascade down to Lagos as well. So yes, it gives a cause for concern. And um, I think that they should look into how Lagos State has been doing it, what measures we have put in place on Lagos, 
how we have to an extent been able to um, go ahead with the lockdown in Lagos because driving through the streets of Ikeja this morning it was like a ghost town you could barely see people around there were no downfall buses no commuters you know very few people on the road you have um, security personnel at virtually every checkpoint you know asking you who you are where you're going so yes in Lagos I think it's working and they might want to take a cue from that in Benin Looking at perhaps other things that they could be doing and what some other state governments are doing, including the federal government, decontamination, disinfecting marketplaces, public places, and homes as well. Uh, do you think that there is any maybe major impact that this has with regards to preventing the spread of COVID-19? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, now, you have to look into what other countries have done as well. Um, if you look at China, you see quite a number of videos being shown of how China is decontaminating the environment. I think that's one of the reasons why China so far has been able to, to an extent, curtail the spread of coronavirus in China. If you look at China, they're doing quite well now, despite the fact that the virus started up from um, China. Now, the decontamination issue is very helpful. Um, I don't know if you saw this record, something on, um, I think, a sheep, that after about um, 14 days, they still found you know, the virus on shelves and stuff like that. So that means there's a possibility of this, um, the virus surviving for a while outside the human body. Research is still going on. There's still so many things we don't know about the virus. So if decontamination would help, I think we should go ahead and do it. All right, let's quickly go to our correspondent who here is live for us in Kano, Idris Jabrin, uh, to give us an update on the compliance levels there. Idris, is there a curfew? And uh, what about social distancing? <coughs> in the metropolis. Well, thank you very much, uh, Millicent. Like you know, uh, Kano state government did not initiate a total lockdown of the state, but rather the state government has uh, ordered all civil servants and students to stay at home. And the state government has also ordered the closure of all entry and exit points across the commercial city of Kano. So in some places, especially marketplaces you will observe that there is a level of there is some level of compliance to social distances but in some places you will not actually see that uh, actual compliance of uh, social distances for example in terms of the issue of uh, border closure closing of entry and exit points of Kano state behind me what you are seeing is Zaria Road, which means anybody coming in from uh, Abuja, Kaduna, Zaria, and Jigawa, they are coming through this route. And the park you are seeing behind me is called Kano Line Motor Park. It is one of the major bus stops where vehicles coming from those axes I've just mentioned used to park and stay. So what you are seeing, there is a congestion of tricycle and some buses there which means there are some vehicles that used to enter Kano through some routes probably that were not identified by security operatives. So despite the border closure, some people are still coming into Kano through some other places unknown to the security operatives, which the security operatives need to beef up their surveillance in, 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 in those particular areas. But generally, in terms of social distancing, in some places, you will see social distancing. But in some places, you will not see it, especially in marketplaces across the state. Jibrin, we, we understand the, the state governor, Ganduja, was leading a task force earlier in the week uh, to enforce compliance uh, at the borders. How is that going? Because, you know, you've talked about this particular border and perhaps the compliance levels at the other areas. Exactly, Millicent. Earlier, state governor has set off two committees. There is the task force committee, and also there is a fundraising committee. And the fundraising committee was essentially established to raise funds and other necessary uh, uh, food items that will be used to assist especially the less privileged and the vulnerable ones. Yesterday, the, that committee held a press conference in which they announced that over 300 million naira were so far collected from various donors across the state and a huge large quantity of food items were also collected the committee has announced that distribution of those food items 
had already commenced. And in the next coming days, they will start distributing other necessary food items to the vulnerable and the less privileged. I must also tell you that there are also places that were identified to be isolation centers. There are people who have not donated money. Instead, they provided isolation centers. All right, For example, Idris. Alaja Ali Kotongote has pledged to convert Sana Abacha Stadium into a 600 bed capacity isolation center. All right, we need to go on a break now. We'll come back to you for up. some more updates coming there from Kano, some of the stimulus packages of the state government. But still to come on the program, we'll tell you why the new twins to a family in India, they've been named after the COVID-19 pandemic. Do join us again. Still the COVID-19 update here on Channels Television as we continue issues relating to this pandemic in Nigeria and also across the world. We've been talking to our guests in our Lagos studio here, Dr. Rieke Oguyemi. She's a public health physician. Let's go back to, um, you saw our correspondent there in Kano talking about uh, the palliatives coming in from the state governments. And this is also going across. Some people are saying uh, this is not sufficient. But if you heard the respondents there at the new Lagos, Benin market, they were saying they need to go out to fend uh, and feed themselves, but they then also have to social distance. So are we between a rock and a hard place, or what should be priority for families in th this period? Hmm. That's a tough one, because um, when you're hungry, the only thing you think about is food. You're a mother with children, the children are home, they're hungry. The only thing you think about is how to get food for them. Your health will come secondary. I think what needs to be done is that the idea that came up of opening the markets between certain hours of the day should help. Because what is being provided really, really, really cannot be enough, to be quite candid. Um, if you look at the estimate for Lagos State when it comes to population, we have an estimate of, let's say, 35 million for 2020. Now, if you break that down into the 57 local governments, local council development areas, you break it down to the ward level, you break it down to the street level, how do you want to cater for all these people? You might be able to cater for some, but will it really be sufficient? So at the end of the day, the government needs to sit down and be able to decide how to go about this effectively. Because if people are hungry, they're going to go out. They won't stay indoors. And you know, in Nigeria, we have this mentality, sorry to say, that um, it's not going to happen to me, which is not a very ideal mindset at the end of the day. So my advice is that even though we're still on lockdown, we're trying to prevent you know, the spread of the disease via social distancing, to an extent, we must be able to provide food for people at the community level so that at least people don't have to go too far to get basic things to eat. All right. We'd we'll like to appreciate your time, public health physician, Dr. Rie Kilgiemi. Thank you for joining us on the Thank program. Thank you so much. And uh, well done to channels. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Our correspondent, Mary Alale Yusuf, she's joining us from Lagos Island to give us an update on the efforts of the state government in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Mary, tell us what's happening where you are. In a few minutes, Millicent will be going into the hall to have a press briefing that will be chaired by the Commissioner for Health. Um, we'll be expecting him to tell us what, what is happening so far in this lockdown. As we know, they spoke about having just over 6,000 contacts that they, they had to go through, and they'd gone through 71% of those contacts. And we have 184 cases right now. Now, that means they've gone through more than 4,000 contacts. For us to have 184 positive results is quite impressive because there are only about 2,000 contacts to still go through. Now, we might expect we should not be surprised if more positive results come out because these are people who came in contact with other cases. But what we should be happy about is this lockdown. The 
popular saying goes that the virus does not move, it's people who move. So if people are kept still, then the virus is kept still a bit longer. So we'll be expecting to tell uh, the Commissioner for Health to tell us more about what is happening with the rest of the contacts. Perhaps you might also tell us uh, a bit about the training. We hear there are lots of volunteers that are undergoing training uh, to help fight the spread. How is that going? Oh, wonderful. I was at one of those trainings where there were about 40 people being trained to go into the new Onikon Isolation Center. And they made me understand that these trainings will go on for four to six weeks. So people will keep coming, volunteers will keep coming and, and keep being trained for these places. So Lagos is actually looking very good, um, very good uh, when you think about personnel. Then, then also the markets. So far we've heard of 25 markets. We'll be expecting that the commissioner will probably tell us about more markets that, be, that are being opened so that people can buy stuff near their houses and won't have to enter buses, which will also help stop the spread as well. Then there was the issue um, some time ago about um, people going out, recovering, and coming back with infections. I put this question to the Commissioner for Health, this concern to him about what's happening in other nations, but he reiterated that a molecular test, really sensitive test, is being used right here, and it can pick up even one virus if it is present in the person's body. So if he gives a clean bill of health, then the person is safe to interact with. Millicent? All right, thank you so much, Mirella Yusuf. Catch up with you a little later on uh, with the latest there from Lagos Island. Let's go over to the world now. The um, latest figures from the John Hopkins University are showing more than a million cases of COVID-19 registered globally. It's another grim milestone as the world grapples with the pandemic. And nearly 53,000 people have died so far with more than 200,000 infected unbelievable you might say while well, the world health organization has live updates on the pandemic each moment depending on where you are the number of cases the number of deaths and we appear to be having uh, quite different figures when you look at the world health organization and john hopkins john hopkins university uh, covid 19 resource center they seem to be ahead looking at uh, several of uh, how they collate their data on the pandemic across the world well channels television brings you another special update of COVID-19. Uh, don't forget to join us then. That's at 6 p.m. But keep watching Channels Television, your home for the news. I'm Minister Walker. Bye for now.